Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 59, A Horse of a Different Color. (laughs) I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my still healthy and still mostly self-quarantined co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, sweetheart? Um, okay, actually, you know, given... Given what's going on and, and such, you know, so doing okay. This is week two. Full, the full, end of the second full week. End of the second full week of yeah. self-quarantine. Uh, kind of a rough week for us. We did have a death in the family uh, last, last weekend. Yeah, last Friday. Uh, we lost uh, one of our cats, uh, Dorian. One of our fur babies, yeah. Um, so we're kind of recovering from that. Mm-hmm. We did a bit of a tribute to the... To Which Dorian, I thought was sweet. Yeah. Uh, yesterday on Insights into Teens, uh, and and we we buried her yesterday. Yeah. So, so aside from that, we do have a busy show today. We have uh, a few Disney stories here. Uh, unfortunately, we still can't get away from the COVID nineteen stuff, which I think is going to be with us for quite some time. Yeah. However, in Star Wars Insights. We do not have, well, I guess there's some related stuff, but it's mostly non-COVID-19 mostly. stories, which is mostly. nice. Yeah. Uh, and then we do have a uh, COVID-19 silver lining mm. in our entertainment news. And then, of course, we'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week. Uh, should be a pretty good show today. Ready to get started? Sure. All right, let's do it. Oh, for Disney Detective. So one of the things that just came out last week was that Disneyland and Walt Disney World are now indefinitely closed amid the coronavirus outbreak. Um, It had originally been announced that they were planning to close just through the end of March and that they would be opening the beginning of April. Um, But now uh, they've basically came out and said, as a result of the unprecedented pandemic and in line with direction provided by health experts and government officials, Disneyland Resort and Walt Disney World Resort will remain closed until further noticed. The Walt Disney Company has been paying its cast members since the closure of the park, and in light of this ongoing and increasingly complex crisis, we have made the decision to extend paying hourly park and resort guest members through April 18th. Okay. So. Well, I mean, that's, you know, there's a lot of people, unfortunately, that are out of work. We're looking at unprecedented unemployment filings right now as a result of all of this. Yeah. Um. The fact that Disney is continuing to pay its employees is is admirable. Yeah, and and that's that says a lot, you know, for for their company. And and you keep seeing different news stories of, of different companies that you know are doing that, that are extending, you know, the payout. Or uh, I think it was uh, Texas Roadhouse as an example. Um, the CEO decided to give up his salary for the year. To basically take that money right. and and pay his employees, um, you know, yeah, and that's the one thing. That's one of the silver linings here. We mm-hmm. talked about is a lot of these companies are stepping up and and doing what's right by their employees. And and I have to say, even my employer, you know, my employer is bending over backwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're because we're part of the uh, uh, the defense infrastructure, defense industrial base. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're a subcontractor for the DOD. Um, we have to stay open, right? 
but there's a lot of people that are high risk that mm-hmm. have high risk family members. Right, right. Uh, a lot of people that are that are really scared about getting exposed to this. Oh, absolutely. Um, and and my company has really been over backwards to, to try to accommodate all mm-hmm. employees that we possibly could. Right. Um, and I applaud you know our company owners for for doing that. And your company's doing much the same. Right. Thing. Our our company worldwide. It, it's a you know I, I work for an international company. Um, and every one of our our countries, every one of our locations is affected in in some way, shape, or form. Um, and they've been sending out notifications, and and basically it's if you can work from home, work from home. Obviously, a forklift driver or you know somebody that works in shipping and receiving has to be in the office, right. um, or has to be in the warehouse. Um, so they've been <clears throat> you know taking measures to stagger you know the break time so not everybody is on top of each other. And for the most part, you know at least. The facility that I work in is a very large distribution center. And, you know, if you're a forklift driver, you really don't come in close contact with a lot of people. Sure, sure. So they're they're making, you know, changes for that. So, you know, there are a couple of people still going into the office. But overall, you know, it, it's kind of a ghost town, but we're still, you know keeping up with business um our one office in north jersey they're completely shut down um so everybody is working from home there um you know and and it was interesting we got a newsletter from our 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 corporate you know in in france and they you know put together a nice little newsletter and what they actually said is you know make sure to keep in contact with people you know it it, it's not social distancing it's physical distancing so um one of the the groups in the uk and in ireland actually did a virtual pub night so they all got online on zoom and everybody was sitting in their house with their pint of whatever and they were socializing so you know and i and i kind of joked uh when i was talking with a, a group of friends uh last night with my women's circle that we do a once a month get together so we did a virtual one so it was wonderful to see everybody but i said you know in the two weeks that i've been working from home i actually talked to my boss and other co-workers more now than when i would be in the office yeah. so it's nice that we're all making sure and even like my boss's boss um you know every time we get on a call hey how's everybody doing how how are your kids are your kids driving you crazy yet you know oh my kid i'm, I'm playing Fortnite with him now and right. you know and it's and it's stuff where normally when you would get a call from you know a co-worker it would be you know, hey, do you have this report? Do you have this da 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 da? Yeah. And now people are actually, how are you doing? How how are you coping through yeah. all this? Is there anything? Yeah, you know? this, so you know, it's it's circling nice to back see. to the to the story here. It's, <clears throat> it's good to see that you know Disney's out there in the forefront, mm-hmm. getting all the getting a lot of the press, right? Uh, where companies like yours and mine don't really get a lot of press, right, right? But it's nice that someone who is getting that kind of press is being leading as an example and and i hope that there are other companies that are looking at disney and saying you know what if they can do it okay maybe we can't do it on the large scale you know because i i know there are companies that that don't have the funding to you know or the money yes, to be able to disney pay does have more money than god <laughs> right? so they can afford it they can afford it but you know if it's something where hey listen i can't give you a hundred percent of your salary i can still give you you know, 70% of right, your salary right. or something to help well, and, get you and, through. And, you know, to you know. supplement this, we <clears throat> do know that the federal government did pass an unprecedented stimulus package that will help, but, you know, the wheels of government churn slowly. So right. you're looking at several weeks before any of that money gets out to the businesses, right. to yeah. the townships, to the, to the individuals. Um, so when companies like Disney... And you know me, I'm not a Disney fan. No, I know. But when Disney steps up and does the right thing <clears throat> mm-hmm. here, I have to give him credit for yeah, it. Yeah, so. so, you know, as of right now, all Disney parks worldwide remain closed, you know, including Tokyo, Hong Kong, Paris, Shanghai. Um, Shanghai Disney, you know, um, re- resorts as of March 9th were partially resuming shopping and dining areas, but the theme park itself, you know, is still remaining closed, so... So as part of our uh, shoot for a silver lining, tell us about 
a horse of a different color. So, although Walt Disney World is temporarily closed, Animal Kingdom Care Team is continuing, uh, continuing to provide top-notch care for the thousands of animals, including the newest addition to the Disney Animal Kingdom, a black that's black and white and cute all over. Aww, um, a Hartman zebra. Uh, Foal was born early Saturday morning, last Saturday, uh, to first-time mom Heidi, and it was a girl. Uh, She is yet to be named, is about 65 pounds, and is quite strong. She was standing within 30 minutes of uh, birth and is already very active and curious. Um, Heidi is showing that she's a natural at parenting skills and she stays close to her baby to bond uh, with her and nurse her. Um, bonding is especially important as a young zebra will imprint on its mother's scent and memorize the unique markings on its mother's hind legs to tell her apart from the rest of the herd. In a few weeks after the pair develop a strong bond, they'll be introduced to the Kilimanjaro Safari Savannah. Um, so if you're not familiar with Animal Kingdom, they have uh, one of the the rides you can go on is Kilimanjaro Safari, where they take you on a a big jeep and they drive you through the savannah, and the animals are are out in the open. Um, They use interesting techniques because you never really see gates or or anything, but they use special techniques to kind of keep them in, in their own area, and you figure... You know, those cast members are still working full time because the animals are there. You, you, you know, you animals, have to still yeah. care care for the animals. Um, so uh, the she was born as part of the Species Survival Plan Program, which is overseen by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums and ensures responsible breeding and genetic diversity of thousands of species of animals. Her arrival marks the third zebra birth birth at Walt Disney World this year, actually. Wow. Um, Hartman's uh, mountain zebras are found in sub-Sahara Africa and are a vulnerable uh, species due to the habitat loss and hunting. Um, So this was, you know, kind of, you know, a neat little... Like you said, a silver lining to to everything. A, yeah. a nice. Yeah, I saw to, this and I thought, you know what? We've had so many stories that are that are bad news that are COVID. We need to have something that mm-hmm. to lift us up. So life still goes on. Exactly. You know, and you know, so um, I know that there are a lot of you know, if you, if you do any sort of search online, you can see all these different zoos and aquariums that are doing live streams of, of different events. Um, there's one <clears throat> that I started following. I think it's shreds aquarium, uh, where they have their penguins that they actually had kind of set loose. Oh, nice. <laughs> among oh, the ones around the, the they walk around, they walk around yeah. the aquarium. So like every day there's, uh, there's, uh, an educational video where they talk about some of their different, um, animals that they have there. And then you get to see the cute video of right. the penguins going up and, and seeing, so like they went to go see the otters and they went to go see the fish and nice. it, it's just, it's kind of cute, you know, because these are things that you don't normally you know get to see yeah. um you know there's another one that that started on twitter i told you about the um not to go off on a tangent but uh of the national cowboy museum right and right. they basically you know and it's funny because every now and then people post like oh i wonder if this is just you know a ploy to you know to marketing well, ploy and, and or whatever it's all a ploy to try right. to get at you know some oh, absolutely. eyes on Something that and people don't normally and say. And it's really kind of funny. So, you know, they, they gave the access to, you know, the security guard. He's the only one that, that's there. And every day he goes around and posts pictures and posts videos. And, like, you know, everybody, you know, on Twitter is like, I can't wait till, you know, I can, the quarantine's lifted and I can actually come and meet right. you. You know, he basically became this little household celebrity. So it's nice to see you know, people in places that you wouldn't normally see in a positive, you know, you're seeing it in a positive light. Like, you know, the, the one aquarium, you know, we have an aquarium, you know, local to ourselves, but Hey, here's, you know, the little kitschy thing that, you know, somebody else is doing to get the traffic. Well, this is, this I think is another example of, of Disney doing the right Mm -hmm. thing. Even though I'm not a big fan of Disney's animal kingdom, Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's a, 
particularly entertaining park. And there are plenty of people I, that do enjoy it. So, I think, you know. I think what they do there mm -hmm. with their uh, support for mm -hmm. various animal rights, oh, mm -hmm. animal survival organizations, right, right. You know all the things that they're doing there. They're they're investing a lot of money mm -hmm. in a lot of charitable things, and they're doing a lot of scientific work mm -hmm. to not only keep the animals that they have there safe and yeah. well bred mm -hmm. and 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 happy, so that right. they have a good good standard of living. Mm -hmm. But they go outside of that park on a regular basis to extend those services to other into the wild mm -hmm. and yeah. to other zoos and to mm -hmm. other animal refuge uh, centers around the world. Mm -hmm. yep. So it, this is one of those ones where, you know, once in a while they, they need to get highlighted for doing mm -hmm. the right thing here, even though it has nothing to do with the parks or anything. Really. Right, right. And it and it's stuff that so many people don't know right. goes on because, you know, when you think of Disney, you think of theme parks, you think of rides, you think of roller coasters and, you know, and here's a whole exactly. other part that, you know, doesn't get a lot of of press right. and it's nice that you know we can bring light to it yep so that was all we had for disney detective mm -hmm. this week we shall move on to star wars insights oh my sound effect didn't work oh no pew pew oh, pew pew it turned down oh. there we go all right oh my goodness <laughs> So, go for Star Wars Insights. Uh, so, a couple of uh, a little stories. So, The Mandalorian, uh, Season 2. Um, so, obviously, it was a big hit. You know, finally, people in the UK... Really? I hadn't noticed. No, you hadn't noticed? Uh, so, finally, our, our, our friends over in the UK are, are finally getting to, to watch it, as Disney Plus has now uh, started streaming over there. Um, what's funny is that... Disney Plus is doing the same thing that they did over here. They're not, they didn't release all eight episodes at one time. They only released the first two, so each week, so. That's one way to get people to hold on to the subscription. <laughs> Well, they got they got plenty of time, you know, on their hands over there. Um, so obviously, you know, it concluded with, it, you know, we got to see, you know, his face and we knew his name and a little bit more about his story. And obviously we got a little bit of a hint about, you know, the the villainous ex uh, imperial leader uh, Moff Gideon, um, who he was like. You know, not to spoil it if you didn't see it, but kind of defeated, but didn't and, and whatnot. Um, so, you know, not a whole lot has come out about season two. Um, you know, so we're getting little little bits and pieces, um, you know, so they're hoping that it'll re return fall of 2020. Um, obviously, with everything that's going on right now, um, not really sure how that's affecting, you know, production. Um they kind of hinted that it would probably uh, premiere in October, a year after the first season um, had uh, premiered. Um, obviously, Pedro Pascal is going to be returning because you can't really have it, you know, without him. Um, well, then you, you can if he you love to take the mask off. Right, then you, you, <laughs> you never... You can literally <laughs> put anybody in the costume. Yeah, true, you could. Uh, the voice might be a little, you know, a little different. Um, and then, you know, various different cast members have, uh, um, you know, most of the, the cast is, is returning. Uh, Rosario Dawson, who we had mentioned a couple weeks ago, she's going to be joining the cast. Um... Uh, Gina Carano, she's going to be returning as as Cara Dune. Carl Weathers will be returning, um, and then we have uh, one of the new characters um, who is going to be played by Michael Ben uh, Behan. Uh, he's actually um, had been in the Terminator film, um, so he's going to be coming to season two. Not sure what character uh, he's going to be in. Um, and then obviously, um, what's his first name? Exposito. Why can't I? What's his? Uh, John Carlo. Um, Exposito will be back, obviously, as Moff Gideon. Um, and he kind of hinted that there's going to be some epic lightsaber duels. And obviously, one of the things that we got to see at the end was the dark saber. So that's 
you know, we're going to hopefully right. find out a little bit, you know. And the last time we saw the Darksaber was in Star Wars Rebels. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you saw it. I didn't see it. Well, okay. I, I saw never it. watched it. Rebels, but so. it's a carryover from right. um, Clone Wars mm-hmm. to Rebels. And now this is the first time it's appearing in live action. Right, right. And then obviously we're hoping to find out more about the child's backstory and right. how, you know, baby Yoda, who's not baby Yoda, came came to be. So little by little, we're getting little hints of things. So I'm sure hopefully as the time goes on, you know, we'll find out, you yeah, know, a little Disney's bit more. Disney's doing so. well in trickling out enough information to have you ask more questions mm-hmm. and make some assumptions. Right, right. Um, I was kind of disappointed that at the end of Mandalorian, no questions, literally none of the questions you had throughout the season were answered. Mm-hmm. Um, shows like that tend to scare me because they kind of keep you on the hook and you usually don't get all the answers that you're looking for mm-hmm. during the course of the show. Right. Um, and in a Star Wars standpoint, I could I could understand that to a certain extent because the universe is so so mm-hmm. big. Right. Um, but you kind of want something. You want some kind of relief. I mean, that the last episode of Mandalorian was over-the-top fantastic. Mm-hmm. Right. But you got no answers. So right. it's like you kind of got to give me something to, to keep me going. Okay. You know? Okay. So I'm hoping to get some answers moving sure. into season two. Sure. Uh, so Rogue One prequel? So obviously we've known for a while that they were doing the prequel uh, for Rogue One, um, which was going to be following uh, Cassie and Andor. Um, and again... Not a whole lot has come out, but basically it's going to be following the adventures of the Rebel Spy uh, during the formative years of the Rebellion and prior to the events of Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Uh, Diego Luna will reprise the role of Andor, uh, which he originated in the uh, 2019... 2016 film um it's going to be kind of a spy thriller that explores the tales filled with espionage and daring missions to restore hope to the galaxy in the grip of a ruthless empire um obviously everybody knows at the end of rogue one (laughs) everybody's fate basically um so it's kind of interesting to kind of no spoilers no spoilers to kind of go backwards and see how he came to be, you know, who who he was. Um, they're also reprising his role is Alan Tudyk, uh, who's going to be K2SO. Um, and that is supposed to be, uh, they're supposed to actually be fil- starting to film in October of this year. And it'll be streaming uh, in 2021. Um, obviously, uh, Diego Luna was talking about how, you know, obviously I'm going to look a lot younger <laughs> than I did uh, in, in Rogue One. So it's kind of interesting to be able to, he, he mentioned in the, the article about being able to kind of go back and, and explore the character a lot more than he was able to, right. um, you know, in the movie. So See, and this is, this is sort of one of the major problems that I have with the way that Disney is handling the Star Wars franchise is it, it's sort of the same thing that Lucas did when he went back and, and retcon whether hand shot first. Mm. Like you present these characters and the first impression that people get is a lasting impression. Mm. So if you're going to present this character once in Rogue One and you're going to develop the character through there, that's the the character that everybody knows. Mm. At that point in time, there's no need to go back and, and, and implement your own revisionist history on that character to show us how we got there. You have your one chance to show us who that character is. And you did a fine job with it in the movie. There's no need to go back and give us backstory any more than there was any need to go back and show us how Anakin became Darth Vader because you shattered the original character at that point. Or no reason to go back and do character development on Boba Fett through the Clone Wars because you shattered the character. And no need to come out with Solo because everyone knew who Han Solo was and then you ruined the character And what movie did you guys watch last night? It's beside the point. (laughs) But my point is, is that when you go back and you do this backstory, you don't move the story forward for these characters. You alter the story that we already know. If Disney wants to come out with more material, come out with new material. 
don't go back and retread characters and try to define the characters beyond where you've already established them because they have a proven history in the Star Wars universe, at least, of ruining their characters. Mm. Every single time they've done this, they've done it wrong. And that's why you enjoy The Mandalorian more than everything else because it's something it's new. something fresh right. it's they've moved the story they've right. moved the narrative of the whole star wars universe forward by exploring an aspect of the star wars universe that you've never seen before with characters you've never had established before okay. so if you're going to do something like this fill in the blanks between uh, return of the jedi and force awakens because there's so much story that needs to mm-hmm. be told over no, a 30 year period. Why are we going back and telling story of a character that we already know what their fate is? Right. I could like, see that. It, it makes no sense. It adds nothing. Like I loved Rogue One. I thought it was a fantastic mm-hmm. movie. Right. But it wasn't one that needed to be made. Right. Nobody needed to see that movie to to make the, the overall Star Wars movie any better. Right. It added absolutely nothing to the story dialogue. Except Darth Vader's really awesome fight scene. Well, yeah, but the problem is <laughs> they never really utilized Darth Vader. Right. And there's no reason that you can't come out with with story that actually moves or, or with material that moves the story forward. And Rogue One failed to move the story forward because it didn't have to. Because you say, knew where it, it was going to end. Right. Right. Like it literally ended at the beginning of A New Hope. A New Hope. Right. So where do they plan on moving the story forward with a prequel to a movie that you didn't need to make in the first place? Well, and maybe it's more to see how I see it more as an in-between of episode three to episode four. You know, like how did, you know, what, what was everyday life like, you know? Well, and you, can, that. and you can do that, and that's sort of what they're doing with, with Clone Wars now, is mm-hmm. they're showing you the direction that these characters went. Right. So if you're going to do that, you have a character in Ahsoka Tano, okay, mm-hmm. where you saw her in Clone Wars, then you saw her in Rebels, now you're going to see her in, in the Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Right. So there's a character arc there that you can continue and show... Because you figure at the end of uh, Rebels, you're seven to eight years or so. Well, no, you're 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 right around the time that A New Hope hits. So you had the whole time during from A New Hope to Return of the Jedi, mm-hmm. five years from Return of the Jedi to The Mandalorian. You know, at the end of Rise of Skywalker, it can be assumed she's no longer with us because her Force Ghost is heard. Right. Right. What happened to her? Right. Why aren't we telling that story? Mm -hmm. And a character that they've nurtured and developed over three series now, why aren't we going with So now you would be happy if they did a a series based on her then? Oh, absolutely. Like, you know she dies at some point. You don't know how. Okay. How does she die? Okay. Where is she at? What's the circumstances? Okay. That's someone that the audience is already invested in. Okay. You have Cassie and Andor show up in a single movie, does his part in the movie, you know, significant part, Mm -hmm. and dies. Right. There's not a lot of character investment in any of the characters that showed up in that movie. So going back and trying to get people invested in the character now is nothing more than trying to sell more action figures. Okay. I'll buy it. That's my point. Like, (laughs) like, I love a good story. I'll sit back and, yeah. No, I love a good story. And I want to see people actually... Nurture that story, mm-hmm. not just try to market it. Okay. And and there's characters out there that, that you can do that with that mm-hmm. people want to know about. Like, how many people wanted to know who Cassie and Andor was before the movie? I could care less. Right. And I'm a diehard Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. You know, if I wanted to know, I'll read about it in the novels, mm-hmm. which is exactly where it should be, which I read, you know, the one... Uh, novel I will be doing a review on eventually is uh, a Jyn Erso novel. You know, I got to know her. I got I read the novels leading up to Rogue One, so I got to know about her father and stuff like that. That's where these minor characters should be. Mm. And really, that's what Cassian Andor is. He's a minor character. 
in the grand scheme of things. So well, give them a novel. Or I could see this is a way, because I don't read the books where you do. So from, you know, from my perspective of it, this gives me the opportunity to find out about these characters that I wouldn't normally know because I don't read the novels. But you see, and that's where right. I, I give, I really hit Disney because they put the interesting, the stuff that you need to know. The stuff that leads up to Force Awakens and the stuff that leads up to all the big movies, mm -hmm. they stick in the novels. Mm -hmm. Yet they're going to give Cassie and Andor a TV right. series who's mm -hmm. insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Okay. Like they lack a focus on priorities here. Well, and maybe now that everybody has a lot more time on their hands, they'll go and get the books and read them. Right. But like <laughs> my point is, is you're given right. you're given a minor character an entire right. TV no, I series. Get it. I understand where you're coming from. They still have not established where the first order came from mm -hmm. in, in the fall of the Empire unless you read the books. Right. How the hell can you have something so important and so impacting on the entire universe relegated to books, but you're gonna give Cassie and Andor his own TV show? It makes no sense whatsoever. Well maybe they're in development to do something to to bring that well, to if they are they're very tight-lipped about it because they haven't well, announced anything well maybe that's you know everybody's working from home now so you know maybe it's time for you to start writing you know that, yeah that might be it i'll, I'll just start <laughs> writing it myself anyway off my soapbox okay <laughs> tell us about mark hamill and his anniversary so mark hamill first starred in star wars back in 1977 which means uh that the world has known him as luke skywalker for 43 years however the actor first donned his tatooine garb a year earlier obviously when filming the beloved movie which actually started on march 25th so that marked the anniversary of a new hope's first day in production so there was a fan that took to twitter uh this week to celebrate the occasion which obviously caught hamill's attention the actor who uh can currently be seen in Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, which recently became available to watch uh, on digital, is often celebrating Star Wars on his social media. So while Hamill's days of playing Luke are likely done, he's clearly not finished sharing stories about his time with the franchise, um, which obviously, you know, makes fans, you know, very happy. Um, so where did the time go? Production began on Star Wars on this day in 1976, the fan had tweeted. Um, first day was in Tatooine, North Africa. Only cast there was Alec Guinness, Kenny Baker, and Tony Daniels. Wouldn't meet Car uh, Carison and Harrison. Carison? <laughs> um, Car that's what he wrote. That uh, was their celebrity uh, yeah, couple Carison, name? Carison uh, and uh, Harry until returning to the UK. Uh, my first shot was of me emerging from the the home towards the Jawa droid sale. I had high hopes that it would be a good movie. True story. Hashtag true story. Uh, Hamill replied. Uh, you can check out. Um, you know, it, in the article, it had a, a picture. You know, of the cast and a, a little tweet. So it was kind of cool. You know how. You know, still. You know, so many years later, little tidbits you know come out uh, yeah. uh, about it and and you know nice seeing uh, you know pictures you know personal pictures from from everything so you know kind kind of cool you know nice little uh, anniversary you know it is a 45. universe with a storied history mm -hmm. and and it has a storied movie making history mm -hmm. too which absolutely. is, which is absolutely. what's very interesting so, yeah so that was all we had for Star Wars Insights. Yep. We will move on to our entertainment news, which I just put another one on here. We'll talk about after our first one. Okay. Which we've already talked about. Okay. So on to entertainment news. <laughs> okay. About the final frontier. So uh, Patrick Stewart shared a special special message uh, last week. So he's in the uh, CBS All Access uh, show uh, Picard, um, and he had shared uh, ahead of Thursday's Star Trek Picard season finale that uh, that uh, he shared a, a message on social media, basically saying that. Um, 
CBS All Access was offering a one-month free subscription, uh, giving fans an opportunity to watch the first season of Star Trek Picard, as well as both seasons of Star Trek Discovery, and every episode of every Star Trek series uh, before it for free. Um, he said, it felt good to bring Picard back. Uh, our Star Trek Picard season finale is Thursday, and starting tomorrow until April 23rd, you can watch them all for free um, in the U.S. with the code GIFT, G-I-F-T. Um, and basically, if you go to CBS All Access, use that to sign up, you'll be able to, to watch all of this. Um, they actually, there was also a, a nice little montage uh, Star Trek uh, video clip that that came out with it too um that basically you know went from you know beginning to the movies to you know current stuff um and you know basically uh he said that caring for the good uh, sorry, caring for the good of other people, living honestly, being compassionate, understanding that there was an absolute necessity for everyone to be treated the same way. That is at the heart of Star Trek and how to become more human. Uh, Star Trek became legendary. The next generation changed my life. We are so excited to bring back Picard again. Um, and in the little video clip, you have different cast members from different Star Wars uh, series making comments, you know, about it. Um, another thing that was actually kind of cool on, on top of this is that, uh, Pat, uh, that Patrick Stewart is also doing something extra to help everyone keep everybody's spirits up. So he is reciting one William Shakespeare sonnet every day on social media. Um, he said when he was a child in the 1940s, my mother would cut up apple slices or slices of fruit for me, which there wasn't much of. And she would put them in front of me and she would say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So how about a sonnet a day keeps the doctor away? So if you follow him on Instagram, uh, I think he's probably posting them on, on Twitter as well. Every day there's a new sonnet. And what was really funny was, I don't remember if it was Sonnet 6 or Sonnet 7. He actually posted a message saying that he tried reading it over and over and it just didn't make any sense to him. So he couldn't do it. So he skipped it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, so it's interesting. So, uh, you know, his, his wife or, or somebody, uh, you know, production wise is, is filming them and it's various areas of, of his house that he's, you know, sitting in, um, you know, and just, you know, a two, three minute video of, of him, you know, reading the, the sonnet. Um, so kind of, kind of interesting to, to add that to, uh, to, to the day, uh, the day's events. Um, but I know I had wanted to see the the Picard episode, but that, you know, CBS All Access was the one, <laughs> you know, the one streaming service we didn't have. So now, you know, until 423 might be something to. Uh, and yeah, I think I think that's one of those take things a, that take we, advantage might, of. we might actually <clears throat> do because I'm I'm an avid Star Trek fan, mm -hmm. just as I am a Star Wars fan. Right, right. And I've been totally turned off from having to pay right. to get a subscription to CBS All Access just to watch Star Trek because they don't offer anything else that I'm interested in. Right, right. Uh, so this might, you know, be my chance to get mm -hmm. my fix of the yeah. shows that they have. And I think there. it's a smart move on on there, you know, to give people, hey, try it out, see if you like it, see if there's other stuff. Yep. And you know, and if you don't like it, great, you you know, you try to out if not you know sign yeah, up so it certainly might be worth it yeah absolutely so the other article that i just threw up here is actually the doctor who one that i was telling you oh about. okay um doctor who just this week celebrated its 15 year return so it's been 15 years since it returned to television after a 15 year Hiatus. Wow. Uh, having gone off the air in, I believe it was uh, 89. Right, right. Uh, and we came back with a single season with Christopher Eccleston. Right. Which we didn't watch. I'd watched the first couple. And I was turned off from funny it. funny because we kind of were, I know, I remember when it, when they announced that it was coming and I was like, oh, maybe I'll give this a shot because my dad was always a Doctor Who fan. Right. And I remember trying to watch Doctor Who with him and I just... 
I couldn't get into it. Yeah. I, I had a hard time at that, you know, age, you know, get, getting into it. And I remember when it started, we had talked about watching it. And I think, again, we watched a couple episodes. Well, when it launched, you know. I'd work, watched the first three episodes and okay. it was a very very different show mm -hmm. from what i used to watch because right. i used to be you know as a kid i watched all the old episodes mm -hmm. uh and everything up you know my favorite doctor was always uh tom baker mm -hmm. and love tom uh, was one of the longest serving doctors right, too right uh and i watched the first and i i just i didn't see Eccleston as Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very different Doctor. Everything was much darker. Mm -hmm. They kind of threw out a lot of the canon Doctor uh, storyline, mm -hmm. and they, they basically reinvented the Doctor, and it, right. it really turned me off. Right, right. Uh, and it wasn't until uh, the second season with who was the Doctor? I can't remember his name. I just had it on the tip of my tongue. The Tenth Doctor? Yes. David Tennant? David Tennant, yes. <laughs> uh, we started watching it together as a family. Right, And right. Sam was watching it with mm -hmm. us, too. And yeah, that's yeah. when we really got into it. Uh, that's when you guys got into it. And we've been diehard Doctor Who fans since then. So with the various TARDISes around. and you 15 know. years ago wow. this week, uh, Doctor Who came back for... The, the latest generation. Wow. And as a bonus to that, the one current doctor, Jodie Whittaker, mm -hmm. uh, in light... Oh, that's the wrong one. In, oh, that's the wrong one, too. Nope, oh, that's the wrong one. one. There it is. There it is. I yeah, it, I actually... I somewhere. So, I didn't move it. Move it, it. It's not moving. You got to move it, move it. All right, well... Just fine. click on there. there you, nope, nope, that's missed not it. it. There. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Yeah, so. I actually posted this on on my Facebook. So, so. okay, so this was cool. Jody Whitaker, being the the you know good sport that she is, mm -hmm. decided to give us an in character message of hope during the COVID uh, emergency. Here, we'll see if it'll play. Oh, hi. This is an emergency transmission. If you're seeing this, the TARDIS must have detected an upsurge in psychological signals from somewhere in space and time. Basically, I think somebody somewhere might be a little bit worried. I'm actually just self-isolating, or as I like to call it, hiding from an army of Sontarans. But keep that to yourself. Now, here's what I do in any worrying situation. One, remember, you will get through this, and things will be all right, even if they look uncertain. Even if you're worried, darkness never prevails. Two, tell jokes, even bad ones, especially bad ones. I am brilliant at bad ones. Three, be kind, even kinder than you were yesterday. And I know you were super kind yesterday. Look out for each other. You won't be the only one worried. Talking will help, sharing will help. Look out for your friends, your neighbors, people you hardly know, and family. Because in the end, we're all family. Four, listen to science and listen to doctors, right? They've got your back. Five, stay strong, stay positive. You've got this. And I will see you very soon. And there you have it. Yeah. A message from Doctor Who. Yep. And I, and I think it was spot on. And, and that's kind of mm -hmm. cool that she's, she's you know going that extra mile to mm -hmm. try to keep people's spirits up. Yeah, and, and it's funny because, you know, this is something that everybody's going through. It's not just, right. you know, a certain um, area of the, the country or the world or a certain, or you know, political, political party. This is everyone's Or religion by. or race or gender. It's, it's everybody. And what's kind of interesting and, and cool in, in some way is that now a lot of celebrities um because again we're all affected by it they're kind of be being more approachable um than ever before yeah. um you know if you're on instagram if you follow you know anybody 
every day there's somebody doing a live stream where they're chit chatting with you know somebody else you know uh you know a friend a family member or whatever and and everyone's talking and saying hey so what are you doing today and oh, i'm staying home what about you yep i'm doing this yep. <laughs> you know like we're all kind of in this you know together and and you have different musicians that are doing, you know, free concerts tonight um, being one. Uh, Elton John is, is hosting uh, iHeart Radio um, Couch something, Couch right. Concert or something. Right. And basically all these different celebrities are in their house, in their home studio, recording a couple of songs and sending it, you know. Um, we watch Walking Dead and we us- and we watch Talking Dead. And uh, a couple weeks ago, they didn't do an episode because for the safety of everyone everybody. Was, everyone was separated, yeah. Um, but last week they did an episode and it was kind of cool because everybody was on Zoom. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, and that's kind of the, the future of it, right? You know, what we're, we're able to adapt to it. And it's kind of nice to see, you know, hey, I'm not the only one that's doing this. Everybody sure. is doing this. And, it, and it's kind of bringing us all you know, together where maybe we, we wouldn't in, right. you know, a normal situation. So. It's, it's nice to see people pulling together like this. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of why I wanted to throw that out there mm-hmm. as, as a closer for our entertainment news, just, you know, end things on a positive note. Mm-hmm. So let's move on to our insightful picks of the week. Okay. for your pick dear uh so my pick this week is from netflix and it is called virgin river um so the premise is seeking a fresh start a nurse practitioner moves from los angeles to a remote northern california town and is surprised by what and who she finds uh virginia river follows melinda uh, monroe who answered an ad for a midwife and nurse practitioner in a remote california town of virgin river thinking that it'll be the perfect place to start fresh and leave her painful memories behind but soon she discovers that small town living isn't quite as simple as she expected she must learn to heal herself before she can truly make virgin river her home um so it, it's very much like million little things and this is us where you have all these different characters that that she comes in contact with but everybody kind of has that that secret you know that that past that they're you know hiding from it's and a very desperate housewives type kind of sort of not as comical you know um you know th- there are some funny scenes but but you know, kind of along that line. It also reminded me a lot of like Gilmore Girls. Um, you know, so with uh, the main character um, Mel, who actually was in This Is Us, also um, from uh, Walking Dead. Um, you know, she's the nurse. Y- you know, you know that she is married or was married, and and each episode you find a, a little bit more, you know, about her through like flashbacks and stuff like that. And you have, you know, the town mayor and the town doctor, and you know, the town busybody and and the bar owner and everything. And it's like, oh, you know, this one was, you know, in the Iraq War, and this one, you know, had something else, and this one's hiding out from something else, and. You you know, so it's kind of interesting. Every episode you get a little bit more, you know, but it's kind of like that warm, fuzzy show, you know, to just kind of sit and watch and, and, you know, take your mind off of, off of things, you know? Okay, cool. So, you know, if you, so if you're a fan of This Is Us or Million Little Things, which last week both had, uh, their, uh, season finales, which, were mind blowing if if you're a fan of them like I am. This was kind of a nice little filler, you know, to to help out. And I did notice um, on Netflix they actually because uh, right now there's just one season um, that they are actually going to be doing a, a season two. So it's it's nice that it's not like a one and done, you know, type thing. So okay, well, good pick. Thank you. So as a sci-fi fan, there are, are you? many genres I that I like, known. Uh, including Star Wars, Star Trek, but I'm also a big fan of Halo, uh, the, the Halo universe that's based on Microsoft's uh, 
game from Bungie Studios. And there are a plethora of novels out there. Uh, a new series that started up recently. Um, uh, the one book that I just finished reading was called Halo Silent Storm. Uh, it is a Master Chief story who was the key character, the key protagonist in the Halo storyline. Um, it's a novel set in the Halo universe published by Gallery Books. And it revolves around John 117, better known as Master Chief. Halo Silent Storm gives readers an inside glimpse into the young lives of John 117 and his team who find themselves thrust into a seemingly unwinnable situation. And what's interesting about this and the books in the series is when you're first introduced to the Master Chief character in the game series, it's already very late in his career. It's very late in the the war against this invading alien species. And he's already this established hero of, you know, the United States, uh, UN, United Nations Space Command, which mm -hmm. is the military organization. Um, so this book series actually shows you as him, as him and his team are in their teens at this point in time, because okay. these are these super soldiers that were recruited as kids, trained up, you know, augmented genetically and surgically and so forth. And they become, you know, the Navy SEALs on steroids. They're, they're these super soldiers, but they're 15 years old. So the book series itself actually shows you how they they learn oh, okay. how to deal with these situations mm -hmm. uh, together they must grow into the types of heroes that legends are made of and become humanity's best chance at survival the novel focuses on the rarely explored error of the unsc's united nations space command's first years in conflict with the covenant who were the aliens a conflict that often divided their efforts between fighting an enigmatic and alien empire and defending their civilization from threats uh, much closer to home thanks to an emboldened colonial insurrection. Uh, so when the Spartan program, which is what uh, Master Chief is a product of, the Spartan Threes, when that's created... Um, they're created to fight off this insurrection. So at this point in time, it's like the 25th century and humanity is spread across the stars, but the control from earth is waning. So you have all these little pockets of resistance out there that all want to be independent of earth and don't want to pay taxes, don't want to have control and so forth. Oh, kind of like now. <laughs> so you had this insurrection that was growing. So the, UNSC creates this controversial program of super soldiers to combat the insurrection. Well, right as they're about to deploy their super soldiers, this alien race starts invading human space and eradicating humans. So, you know, the super soldiers, the Spartans are created at just the right time to fight these aliens that we have no idea how to fight. So, uh, Silent Storm is one book in this early series of how the Spartans evolve into the super soldier heroes that they become later that everyone is familiar with. Um, the book is, is it's a good book. It was, it's kind of a hard read right off the bat because you, okay. I came into it with certain assumptions. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you put those aside, it's very interesting to see how the character development happens. And that's really what this book series is all about. It's about... You know, this character that you already know as this almost infallible super soldier learning from his mistakes. And you see the mistakes of, a, you know, he's he's got all this training, all these augments and everything. He's still a 15-year-old naive kid. Mm. And he starts to learn who to trust, who not to trust, how to read people, how to, you know, you know his own limitations. So it's really interesting the way they do it. The books are very different than what the traditional Halo books are. Mm -hmm. um, they're almost like a coming of age type of book here as he becomes the soldier with his team. So uh, Halo uh, Silent Storm is available in hardback, 
softback and uh, digital audio downloads from uh, Amazon. Very cool. And I think that was all we had for this week. Mm -hmm. uh, normally at this time, we usually give our contact info. I think we're going to change it up a little bit here. Um, since nobody seems to want to contact us, we're not going <laughs> to give that out this week. However, I will Im uh, uh, implore people to subscribe. Uh, you can subscribe through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Castro, CastBox, Podcaster. Uh, if you're watching our videos on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button on YouTube and subscribe to us. If you are watching us on Twitch, we do stream live five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Please follow and or subscribe to us on Twitch. Uh, your support is very helpful to us. Mm -hmm. It keeps us going. We would love to hear feedback. If you do want to send feedback, you can email comments at insightsintothings.com. We are always looking for input from our viewers. Even if you don't like us. Uh, yeah. A negative <laughs> feedback is still feedback. It tells us what we're doing wrong. Tell right, us what we're right. doing right. If we're doing anything right. Right. Um, we'll take it any way we can get it. Anything else? <laughs> nope. I think that's it. I think we are done. Thank you for listening and watching. And we will be back. God willing, next week with another informative, insightful podcast. Absolutely. Stay safe, everyone. Wash your hands. Don't touch anyone. Don't touch anyone. <laughs> and we're out. That's another one in the books. Have a good one, everyone. Bye. <laughs>